is going on here in the cabin? We are ready to get outside, have adventures, and just enjoy spring all together. Hello, folks, and welcome to your outlet for outdoors and Western lifestyle news, The Ben Show. I am your host, Rebecca Warner, a.k.a. Beck. As always, love hearing from all of you. Comment, stories, ideas. Get a hold of us anytime. Call or text 305-900-BEND. Again, that's 305 900 2363. Or you can always email bendradioshow at gmail.com. Riding along shotgun as always, producer, sound engineer, and co-host Jeff Tigger Earhart is in the house because he has nowhere else he's allowed to be when I am recording this show. <laughs> right? <laughs> How do you like that? Put me in my place. <laughs> That's what I do. That's what I do. All right. Today's show April is here, and so we are going to be talking about a whole assortment of things from hunting, fishing forecasts, to it's also National Garden Month, so we got some tips, excuse me, for successful gardening, and a lot more. So let's get the show rolling. April, yes, is here, and what comes to my mind? Spring turkey season. It's prime time, I know, for those hunting enthusiasts that love following the gobblers. And with spring turkey season taking center stage right now, I know a lot of you hunters across the United States are gearing up for the thrill of that chase. But uh, you need to stay updated on which states are opening their seasons. Some have zones, and you can do that by heading to thebenshow.com. We've got you covered with links to the National Wild Turkey Federation site providing all the essential details you need for that successful hunt, meaning the dates, because we know the excitement is there. Some states do allow you to buy turkey licenses over the counter. Others, there was a lottery like in our state. But regardless, as you hit the field and do so, we wish you the best of luck. And remember, before you head out that door, though, be double checking what your state regulations are or the state you're going to visit, because every year we say it again and again, there's always changes to be had. Next, also for the hunting, I call this shed hunting. Yes, those antlers. Now is prime time as well as you're getting out and getting excited to get hiking and looking and hunting for those sheds from the big game. Have fun All I, is all I can say. But again, make sure you're checking with your state to find out if there are regulations, especially some of those states that are further in the West. They have implemented certain dates of when you can and cannot come in for shed hunting. One of those states is Wyoming as an example. But if you're out and about, be sure to have fun, enjoy it. And if you find some real wingers, I don't know, those biggins, make sure you share a picture with us. We'd love to see it. You can send that to Ben Radio Show at gmail.com. Next, what is going on out in the world of the outdoors? Fishing. April is a terrific time to be reeling in the action. Temperatures are rising, spring is blooming, and it's time to hit the water, right? To reel in some excitement. So whether you're a seasoned angler or a novice, The Ben Show, we've put together the lowdown on the fish that are running and where to find them right now this month. Let's start off with tarpon, bonefish, and permit, known as the triple threat. Tarpon, bonefish, and permit are cruising the coasts of Florida. If you're heading that direction, get ready for some action-packed fishing in the Sunshine State is how I'd like to put it. What about red drum or the reds? Red drums or reds? The red drums are making the move along the Gulf Coast, starting from Texas, moving all the way around to Florida. Another one that's hot on a lot of folks' list is the sailfish. Sailfish enthusiasts, listen up. Head to Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula or Florida's East Coast for some thrilling sailfish action. That's on my bucket list is to go after one of those. Same with this one, the marlin. Have you been dreaming of landing that massive marlin? April is your month from the Caribbean to Costa Rica. The marlin season is in full swing. Salmon. Looking for some freshwater action, are you? Lake Michigan is thawing out, offering fantastic salmon and trout fishing opportunities. And as of April 1st, coho salmon are hot now with steelhead and rainbow trout to join the pace towards the month end. Next, we've got the striped bass in the northeast part of the country near Maryland, New Jersey. Be chasing after those striped bass. Lastly, what about mahi-mahi? 
In April, mahi-mahi, also known as the dolphin fish, are a sought-after catch for anglers found near the shores in Hawaii and in the Gulf Stream through the Florida Keys. They provide exciting opportunities for fishing enthusiasts. So all I can say is get ready to reel in those prized fish during this next fishing season. Now, hearing about all these different fish, Tigger, doesn't that have you getting excited? I haven't even gone out and even thought about getting my fishing gear out. But yes, now I am thinking about it. Well, and on top of that, pretty much anywhere in the States where the ice has now thawed and it's nice and cold, I'm going to say go give it a try, okay? Definitely give it a try. I know up here in the northern parts of the States where walleye might be a little more popular, a lot of times they're some of the best eating when you're getting them out of that cold spring fresh water. So hit the water. Find, you know what, I'm going to put it this way. I'm going to challenge all of you this next year because when it comes to fishing that often is one of the best sports to go and take a novice never before person that's done something like that to go do kind of put their toe in the water dip their toe in the water is to look around you what is a youth who is a youth and it doesn't have to be a youth it could be somebody that's just never done it before i encourage you to Try and take the chance and bring them along with. You might be surprised. Wouldn't you agree, Tigger? Guess what I'm doing as we speak. You... I am renewing our fishing license. That's I'm literally, I'm doing that as we speak. You're talking about this, so I am online and uh, I'm getting our combination license. So it covers us for fur bears and everything. Smart. I'm glad doing you everything. Yep. brought that up. So yes, before you decide to head out fishing wherever you have, remember your licenses have expired from last year, more than likely, and uh, make sure you have the proper licenses in your back pocket. We don't want anybody getting in trouble. You need trouble. to keep them on person. Yes. Don't just think that. Don't have them back in the truck. You got to have them on person. Have them on you. And that goes for turkey. It doesn't matter what you're chasing after as you enjoy your hunting and fishing seasons this year. A, check with the local regulations first. There's always changes every year. One doesn't think, but yes, legislation gets passed and you never know. There can be secret little things that pass by and you just didn't know it. Make sure you know what the limits are for said fish you're going after. And if you've never been to a certain area and you want to go fishing, I kind of do re recommend, this is my recommendation, is Check with the local guides in the area. Sometimes that first time out, even if you are a skilled angler, it's just good if you're going after something you've never, you know, fished for before. Think about hiring a guide. So with that, with so many fun things going on already in April, have fun, cast your line, reel in some memories, and uh, just get ready for your fishing season ahead. We're going to take a short break here on The Ben Show. When we come back, we're going to be talking about National Garden Month tips for success. Stay where you are. The Ben Show will be back right after this. This is Beck. First, I appreciate all of you for listening and making The Bend part of your week. Many of you have asked, how do I catch past episodes? The answer is super easy. Head to thebendshow.com and click on the shows tab. There you can listen to every episode all the way back to episode one. Podcasters, head to your favorite podcasting app and search The Bend. You'll find us. Be sure to follow and subscribe and never miss another episode again. Get ready for the Western experience of a lifetime. The world-famous Mile City Bucking Horse Sale is back and better than ever. Join us May 16th through the 19th in Mile City, Montana. From the finest bucking stock to electrifying horse racing, this event has it all. Don't miss out on the kickoff concert featuring Josh Turner and special guest Chancey Williams. Mark your calendars and saddle up for the world-famous Mile City Bucking Horse Sale where the spirit of the West comes alive. Get your tickets at BuckingHorseSale.com. You've waited, dreamt of a hunting adventure, and now have harvested that trophy of a lifetime. Keep the memory alive with a custom-designed mount preserved as a work of art. 
Check out our approved taxidermist. Depending on your location, the award-winning Schneider Taxidermy is located in Helena, Montana. When hunting the Dakotas, JB's Wildlife Designs in Mandan, North Dakota, then Shadron Creek Taxidermy in Nebraska, and for the Central USA, Little Rack Taxidermy in Macomb, Illinois. Reach out to The Ben Show and let us help you find the right taxidermist. Welcome back to your outlet for outdoors and Western lifestyle, The Ben Show. I'm your host, Rebecca Warner, a.k.a. Beck, and a long shotgun is my co-host, Jeff Tigger Earhart. So for those of you that did not know, April is considered National Garden Month. That's a little early, though, for gardening, though. It might be, but depends on where you are in the country. I get it. I get because, it. say, for example, already, as soon as the beginning of April happens... Uh, the cherry blossom season is coming to an end. So really, it depends on where you are at. If you're in the southern half of the country, you've already got your garden planted and you are way, you're well underway, okay? Well, I know that as soon as uh, Easter is over, you go to any store. Well, shoot, Easter isn't even over. And they already have at your farm supply stores, there's potting soil out front. Uh, you go into your grocery stores and all the candy is away and they're tempting you with seeds and all that. Well, you know, and I always laugh because my grandpa always, I love those uh, old wise tales that you're told, but he always had a rule of thumb. You plant potatoes the day after Good, Good Friday, Friday. Yep, yep, those types of things. But that's spuds though. They're resilient. They can <laughs> grow in just about anything. I mean, kids use them for science experiments for crying out loud. Remember the potato gun? Do mm-hmm. you remember that? Mm-hmm. Or do those even exist anymore, I wonder? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. And I'm so tired of potatoes. We grew these purple ones last year. and They were I'm amazing. Out. Did you realize, actually? Okay, so last year we grew purple potatoes. Everyone laughed at me, said, how in the world could there be a purple potato? That doesn't exist. And then I kind of, I don't know if you want to call it, freaked everybody out. But everyone was wondering what I did to the mashed potatoes at every holiday we had last year. Because it wasn't year. just the skin. It was the inside. They the were, meat of the potato was purple. It was like purple. Minnesota Viking purple, <laughs> like royal purple. I got told so many times, this is just wrong. But lo and behold, those purple potatoes were the healthiest potatoes you could have eaten outside of a sweet potato. But FYI. I don't eat a lot of potatoes, though, because they're don't. high in starch. They're high in carbohydrates. You know, I'm trying to keep my tiggerish figure. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even going to comment on that one. But it, for those of you that are into gardening or you are not and have never tried it, I am going to, and I think Tigger will agree with me, encourage you to do some type of gardening because you don't have to go out and till, you know, a quarter acre or do some massive garden like your grandparents used to do. You can do things as simple as just take a pot or two and put them on your deck, on your balcony, on your house. It's very therapeutic. It is. I, I got to be honest that I mean, I tried a little bit of gardening and it can be very expensive. Let's just be honest, <laughs> Beck. <laughs> I mean, how many, I don't, I don't even want, I mean, can we write that off? Is that a tax write off? I don't know. It should be. Um, It can be very expensive. So just keep it simple. Okay. But in relation, have you ever priced it out between gardening versus therapy? I mean, a lot of folks say gardening is cheaper. I was going to say gardening cheaper. versus just go to the store and buy your fresh <laughs> veggies. But no, it is it is a lot of fun to watch everything grow throughout the summer. I mean, it, I get a kick out of it, too. Well, scientists have come back again and again and say that there are a multitude of benefits, the physical, mental, both of those. It helps greatly. You're getting out and getting vitamin D. You're pushing yourself to get outside repeatedly every day. Can I give a recommendation, though, yes. for those people planning a garden is... Please understand that depending upon where you're at, there is actually a commitment that goes with it. If you oh, have no, true. if you have to water, um, if you've got a pile of flowers sitting around, or if you've got this massive garden and you're taking off, like you and I are gone a lot. So there is a commitment that goes with this. You don't just throw seeds. I know some people throw seeds in the ground and boom, they've got a pumpkin patch, but we're not that lucky. So there is that commitment factor. Keep that in mind when you're planning what you're going to do this year. Beck. Which is my first gardening tip is so that you have don't a rock garden. Overwhelm oh, yourself. A rock garden. Is to start small. Oh, okay. And choose the right plants that fits your lifestyle. See how I said that, I Tigger? See how you, I see how you, you did see that. that. Well, that's why I said a rock garden. <laughs> 
And so I'm not just talking about plants that say you're like Tigger and I and you're on the go all the time and they might not get watered very often. You're going to want to look at what zone, where you live, and if you have to look at more drought resistant type plants, for example, potatoes and corn will grow anywhere. <laughs> Let's or just be should. honest. <laughs> Here's another little tip I learned is uh, planting beside a metal building. That fried my oh, plants. Yes, I didn't even know that that was a situation, but that fried my plants. I mean, nothing grew. My peppers died. My lettuce died, everything, and I couldn't figure it out. And it was too much heat that was radiating because it was right beside a metal building. Boom. So there you have it. As you're thinking about whether or not you want to dabble in gardening this year, that's the second tip is after you've chosen the right plants, make sure you've considered the factors of what is the sunlight time where you're going to have these plants? What is the soil type? And again, the most important is the climate zone. Not that you go and you plant something and you live in an area with a short growing season. Right. That's not going to work. Or you plant your garden in an area that maybe you still might get snow in May. You might want to wait till the end of May, till the last frost. Or if you want to buy your plants versus try the seedlings, you're definitely going to want to wait till frost is no longer an issue. Otherwise, you're just going to throw good money after nothing. And don't overlook the knowledge of your county agents. Thank they you. have that is a huge resource for everyone. I, I I always say we know everything, but our county agent helped us out tremendously last year when we had a lot of issues that you and I and I would consider you and I pretty darn sharp. And you and I were just stumped. I was mad, of course. Honey, you get mad if Well, it's because I'm full blood German. That's how I roll. <laughs> but that was also on my list is that if you have any issues where your past garden hasn't worked out or you are new to this, check in with those county extension offices because they're very familiar with what is going on. Some of them even offer free soil testing just to get you going. Yep. And often this time of year, rolling in through June, they might have workshops that you might want to attend a great time to maybe have a girl's evening or something like that. Go and learn a thing or two about the plants that would grow the, we the best. And we're talking anything from your vegetables, your fruits, to even your flowers. They all matter because think about this is an investment. Yes, there is a cost involved in doing this. And your time is a cost if you think about about it that way too and so, some of them if you don't want to grow them next to each other some of the the types of flowers or the types of uh fruits or vegetables they don't like being cucumbers next to each and other. tomatoes for example there they do not like to be put in the they same are not container friends. they're not friends at all <laughs> one other tip i'm going to tell you so that you don't have a lot of frustration, and that is the tools, you know, to ensure you have a positive experience, invest in the right type of tools just to make it a little bit easier on you, your back, your hands. So there can be a lot of pros and cons, but please get outside and enjoy it. Head to our website, thebenshow.com. We've got some further tips for you. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back right after this. Pro Rodeo fans, watch the Cowboy Channel anytime, anywhere with PRCA on the Cowboy Channel Plus. Live stream the Cowboy Channel or watch your favorite PRCA rodeos on demand. Classic PRCA rodeos added weekly. Get the PRCA on the Cowboy Channel Plus for only $9.99 a month or save 25% by signing up for a full year. Visit CowboyChannelPlus.com to sign up and start streaming today. The hunt is planned. The guide is booked. The trip is blocked off in the calendar. But one huge detail remains, preserving that trophy, creating a memory that will last a lifetime. Little Rack Taxidermy has that fast, friendly service to fulfill your taxidermy in a timely, professional manner. Reach out to Heather with Little Rack Taxidermy through Facebook at Little Rack Taxidermy or send an email to heatherjoe23 at hotmail.com. Little Rack Taxidermy, bringing back the natural look. Shooting ducks, skinning bucks, I'm a hunting princess in a pickup truck. Get ready for the thrill of a lifetime. The world famous Mile City Bucking Horse Sale is back, featuring one of the largest one day match bronc riding events on the planet. Join us on Sunday, May 19th at the fairgrounds for a PRCA sanctioned spectacle where over 30 elite bronc riders compete for a massive $50,000 purse. Let's add to the excitement with paramutual wagering. Visit buckinghorsesale.com for a full schedule and tickets. The world famous Mile City Bucking Horse Sale in Mile City, Montana, where the spirit of the West comes alive. 
Welcome back to your outlet for outdoors and Western lifestyle, The Ben Show. I'm your host, Rebecca Warner, a.k.a. Beck, and riding along shotgun is my co-host, Jeff Tigger Earhart. Now, we have an event that if you have not been to this, you're going to want to add this to your bucket list. And if you've been to this before, there are all kinds of reasons to go back and see it again. And that is to attend the world famous Miles City Bucking Horse Sale. This is a Western event that is held annually in Miles City, Montana, in the heart of cowboy country. And to witness the excitement that goes on at this World Famous Mile City Bucking Horse Sale. It's an event like no other, wouldn't you say, Tigger? I mean, this is one for anyone that, honestly, for anyone. I mean, uh, it's not just uh, a bucking horse sale. This is multiple days of highlighting the cowboy way of life, the Western way of life. I mean, they bring in the top i'm talking the top 30 saddle bronc riders in the country for the the prca match bronc ride um the rookies come in and it's not just bucking horses either i mean there are there's horse races and of course there is the actual sale itself but i mean so much is focused around a piece of history a piece of tradition and that's why the mile city bucking horse sale has grown so much is because it really is all about one of the most I- iconic symbols of the American West, and that is the bucking horse, right? The wild horse. You just explained that beautifully, Tigger. And when he talks about the finest bucking stock, we're talking about the finest bucking stock in North America show yeah, up yeah. at this event. Not, not just like Montana. We're talking, <laughs> yes. I mean, the best in the world is there. The best cowboys, uh, the best fans... The best people, I mean, from all over the continent show up in Mile City, Montana. It is an amazing event. And as he said, there's even racehorses. There's even a vendor show that brings in, we're talking some terrific fun Western lifestyle gear. If you're looking for that kind of attire to trinkets, to ropes, new hats. Oh, it's it. I mean, I sometimes have a hard time describing it because I'm obviously getting very, very, very excited to go to the buck and horse sale. It's one of those. I've been there multiple times. Last year was your first time out there, so maybe you should give your opinion of what you thought it was like. Well, I got to say, the world-famous Mile City Bucking Horse Sale now is an event that I am happy to look forward to attending annually because it's that good. Like he said, when you bring in those types of riders from around the world, the top 30 in Saddle Bronc, to come down and the rookies that are up and coming paired with some of the best bucking stock in the nation, North America, I guess I should put it that way. Canada comes down. It's amazing. And then pair it with, again, you're seeing vendors. You get to attend. So there's something for the whole family. There's paramutual wagering as well. So if you're feeling a little lucky, maybe on, on a lot of the different horse races that are going, those were, in my opinion, those were the funnest to watch because oh, when you so want to talk about getting Western and just downright goofy um, in the grandstands are wonderful. You're in the shade and there's people literally from all over the country. So even if maybe you didn't grow up on the farmer ranch or you maybe don't have that much interest, maybe in the sport of rodeo or the cowboy way of life, or you're just curious You need to make a trip to Miles City because everybody just opens up their doors and says, welcome to our lifestyle. It's a weekend where everybody gets to be a cowboy. And if you're thinking about doing a road trip, especially if, say, Yellowstone has been on your list, maybe Theodore Roosevelt National Park, maybe going down to Mount Rushmore, excuse me, in South Dakota, you can make a wonderful round trip with this and and stop at Miles City for the world famous Miles City Bucking Horse Sale. It's a great pit stop along the way. There's uh, concerts that are going on. I mean, there's festivities. Here's what I will say: if uh, if any of you are making your way to Miles City, reach out to Beck and I. Yes, because we'd love to meet up with you. I mean, it's incredible how many friends that we see and then how many friends that we make when we're at Mile City. So when is this going on? It happens every year, the third full weekend in May. So there you go. Third full weekend in May. We've got further details on thebenshow.com in this show's show notes. So check it out. Get your tickets and plan to see us in Mile City, Montana at the world famous Mile City Bucking Horse Sale. And you can go to buckinghorsesale.com 
and find out more information. By the way, you can get your tickets there and a full schedule. There you have it. All right, folks, we're going to call this show wrapped. Thank you again to Jeff Tigger Earhart for being my wonderful producer, sound engineer, and co-host. And remember, folks, to keep sending in your questions you might have. If you know of something spot worthy for us to share a recipe we need to try in our own cabin kitchen here or your area's field reports, that number again, call or text anytime is 305-900-2363. Again, 305 305- 900-2363, or you can always email bendradioshow at gmail.com. And if you missed part of this episode or want to hear past shows, you can find them all on the website, thebendshow.com. Be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcasting app or to The Ben Show YouTube channel. And as always, if you're looking to change things up for your next event, conference, awards, banquet, even rodeo, consider having Tigger and Beck entertain your crowd. We are PRCA Pro Rodeo card holders. Tigger is a pro rodeo announcer and we are PRCA music directors as well. So we are ready to make your event extra special. Thank you to our partners, Ditelli Outdoors, the world famous Mile City Buck and Horse Sale, the Prairie Crocus, Medora Boot and Western Wear, Blue Water Girl Charters, Buckstorm, Little Rack Taxidermy, Mickey's Mustard, ToxicCalls.com, Atlas Tracks, RFD TV, and Wrangler. Finally, a big thanks to all of you listeners out there that came along again this week. And whether you are coming or going today, stay with us as we ranch it up. And remember to keep up with Beck all week long by following The Ben Show on Facebook and on Instagram at The Ben Show. This is Rebecca Warner. Catch Beck if you can next week on The Ben. Mm-hmm.